some heartbreaking news late last week uh, that shocked all of us in the MMA community. Glenn Robinson, the founder of the Black Zillions, uh, who made a big splash when he came into the MMA world, uh, representing the likes of Rashad Evans, Anthony Johnson, Tyrone Spong, Eddie Alvarez, and many more, um, sadly passed away due to a heart attack. He was just 50 years young. Uh, his funeral was yesterday, as I said at the top of the show, always so great to work with, uh, so great to the media, always very accessible, and changed a lot of fighters' lives. Uh, so now I wanted to talk to Rashad about Glenn's legacy and what he did for a lot of MMA fighters and how much he meant to all of them. Rashad is kind enough to be joining us on the phone right now. Rashad, thanks for joining us. I really appreciate it. Oh, no problem, man. No problem at all, man. It's just, uh, you know, it's just so difficult when, uh, you know, something like this happens. But, uh, you know, this this fate, you know, um, you know we, we, all, we all have to die sometime. And it never, you know, knowing that, but it, ne it never gets easy to deal with it when you're dealing with somebody, a death with somebody that's close to you, you know? Um, we had heard that he, he passed away from a heart attack. Is that accurate? Yes. Yes. It was from, it was from, uh, from a heart attack. It was on uh, Wednesday, Wednesday morning. Uh, was he, Wednesday morning he passed. Was he struggling with his health or was this completely out of the blue? Yeah. He, he had some heart issues, but the... the um, not, not 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 heart issues. He had other health issues, but the heart, the shortness in breath, it started about two weeks ago, and he went for um, checkups to try to see, you know, if it was you know something wrong. And he was, um, you know, going to doctors and getting some tests, but they weren't coming back with anything conclusive. So he was still steady in the testing process. Uh, you know, actually, the day after he died was the day he was actually supposed to go and get. Uh, some more treatment to see exactly what is going on with the shortness of breath. When was the last time you spoke to him? You know, um, I seen him at Tyrone's fight two weeks ago, but him and I really didn't speak. You know, him and I really weren't, uh, you know, speaking regularly. You know, um, you know, we, we uh, you know, like, like brothers, man, we, we have situations where we, we would be cool for a while, then we would, uh, you know, we'll have arguments and, you know, then we'll make up and then we'll be cool again. But sometimes, you know, life is just get busy and we're really speaking too much. But, you know, the, the love the love was never lost. You know, the thing with the whole team and, and, and how it uh, split apart and fractured and all the drama that dealt with it, I think that contributed a lot to uh, just the overall stress and overall just um, just 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 hard the hardships that he was experiencing uh on the health level the last few years of his life because you know after things started to deteriorate uh with the team you know his health was deteriorating too and you know it, it, it they kind of mirrored each other you know and he just couldn't couldn't get a handle on his health situation i spoke it's it just it, what's that oh i was going to say that i spoke to him a little bit as the team was somewhat dissolving and some of the fighters um, were, were leaving the team and he was no longer representing yeah. them. And, and it seemed to me like this was heartbreaking for him that he, he poured a lot into the sport and a lot into the team. He, Do you, you, you feel like that contributed to his, his poor health? Yeah. You know, just, just because, um, you know, he, he was, uh, you know, he was very um, upset about it. And uh, I, you know, I think it definitely had, it had its factor, but you know, also, you know, I, not for nothing, no lifestyle too. You know, he, uh, you know, uh, not, not to say anything bad about him, but he, he just, you know, he didn't, he didn't, he didn't take the best care of himself. You know, he was always so busy trying to, uh, trying to, you know, put out fires or, or try to, trying to do something that he just really was always just focused on, on, uh, on, on this, the task of, of just, of just creating, you know, that's, that's what he, he always was, was, uh, into, you know, making tools and, and, and trying to find a way to make projects work. So that's what he, he, he put, in, in front of doing the things that he should have done to make sure that he was living a healthy life. Uh, you met him you at know, a, and sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. Go ahead. No, no, go on, go on. I, I was just going to say, you met him at an interesting point in your life. Cause that's when you were leaving Jackson's and, and there was all that drama with John Jones and, and the yeah. coaching staff over there. How did you meet him and how did he get you to move to Florida and be sort of the captain and the face of this team? Yeah. So I met him through a uh, manager that I had, of my name, John Rubenstein. John Rubenstein was a uh, manager that I had that I used for acting. And um, he was working at the time, John Rubenstein was working with Glenn Robinson 
with uh, some, some somebody else with another project, and uh, he thought it'd be John, uh, John Robinson thought. I mean, Robinson thought it'd be a good idea if um, if we, me and Glenn, me and Glenn got together and met, and we did, and it, you know, we had that that synergy, and you know, it felt like a natural fit, you know, and uh, you know, Glenn, Glenn and I were close right away from day one, and just the heart that Glenn had, you know, that's 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 the thing that that hurt me about anything because here's here's the reality of the situation, like, you know. He he didn't. He I guess he the impact that he had and what he did for a lot of people it goes unnoticed just because of the way of how how it ended. You know, Glenn Glenn he he allowed he took care of a lot of people. You know, a lot a lot of fighters on the team he would take care of these guys and he did it for the purest intentions. It wasn't like he's ever like. Okay, I'm gonna own, I'm gonna lend you five grand, but I want seven grand back. It was never never anything like that. A lot of times, Glenn would pay fighters uh, their rent, you know, give them money to live. He would he would literally come from his own pocket to take care of these guys. And when he wasn't able to do that, he didn't say, "Hey, I can't do it anymore." Pride took over, and pride didn't allow him to say what he can and can't do. He enjoyed doing that he enjoyed helping people out so when he wasn't able to do that anymore you know he started he 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 didn't adjust his promises because he still believed and still wanted to help people out and then that's where people were like wait a minute he's screwing me he's not you know and that's when the that's when people started to pull away and also when he got sick he didn't communicate or didn't want people to know how sick he was, so he wouldn't speak to people when he got sick. Mm. And people took that as like, okay, he's pulling away from me. So it just kind of separated the whole team. And um, it was a, it was a big just it, it was it was communication broke down, okay. and that's and that's what what caused everything to kind of fall apart. You know, and and watching him watching him, you know laid to rest yesterday and, and just, you know, feeling that emotion, feeling the feeling and watching all, you know, my other teammates, you know, that was there. They, 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 they got it. They understood. They felt, and they, we were all thankful for, for, for no matter how the situation ended with us all, you know, um, disbanding it and going our separate ways or whatever the case may be. Uh, we all understand that we were all brought in this position and we were all brought together because of him, you know, rather it was, you know, with all the best promises being kept or not, we're here because of him. And he did a lot to help people out. And, and that's what that's what I was sitting there at his funeral just thinking. I'm like, man, we're all here because of him. And, you know, him and I had our problems. But at the end of the day, I wouldn't trade anything because I, I enjoy my life now, you know. How was the funeral? It, it was difficult. It was difficult uh, just because... Um, there was that there was that uncertainty in the air, you know, because you had, um, you know, you you had the fighters there, and then you had his family there, and and you know, you know, there there's there's a bit of of like you know because the family and, and everybody was really close to Glenn before he got involved with the fight life. They they look at him spending all his personal money and diving deep into this business venture. And you know it, it. It looks it looks crazy. You know you, you look. You, you know you you. It looked like he's losing his mind. And for a while they thought he was losing his mind, but they kept supporting him. And um, when things went to, to you know to hell, you know uh, it left a, a sour taste in their mouth because they felt as if like well, you know he, he wasn't able to do everything he said he was able to do for you guys. But doesn't what he did mean anything to you at all like what he has been able to come through and do you know if he if if you ask him to help you out a hundred times but he helps you out you know 70 does does the 70 times you count mean anything or is it the 30 times that he didn't do anything for you that you're you're saying oh he he's you know he, he's not whatever you know so I, I can understand that so that that kind of made it like at the funeral like you didn't know how the energy was going to be but then once everyone started to just grieve together then it was you know that that energy just wasn't there okay well that is good yeah no that makes yeah it was good man 
Um, it was good, man. It's just, it's just, it's just, you know what it is, Ariel? It's just so hard because, uh, you know, Gooney came into this game and, you know, he, 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 uh, he, he rubbed a lot of things the wrong way with some of the things that he did coming on scene. But um, he accomplished a lot. You know, he accomplished a lot and he put our team in a position where, you know, it, it takes teams a long time to build up to that level. You know, we had a killer team and, and, and we had some of the best times of our life. And, and and he was a part of that, you know. Do you have a favorite memory with him? Something that you 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 shared with him? A moment backstage at the gym, before a fight, after a fight? Is, is there any is there any moment memory that you can share with us of of you know when when things were just going great with you and the team and him um, in, in in Florida once you moved there? You know what, what I would like that we would do that and and, and that's something that I'm gonna miss. You know. We would always, we, we, we weren't just saying that we were like family. We really were like family. Like our days consisted of, you know, we were always all together, almost every single, you know, a lot of things that we did. So he would have like these fight parties and, and they were just, they were, they were just epic. You know, they, they you never knew what was going to happen, you know, and, but it was just, uh, you know, cause outside the fight, we just, you know, we, we, we would just have a good time, you know, and, and we would do these uh, you know, like these staycations where we're like, all right, we're going to go to uh, Miami for the weekend and we're just going to have a great time and go and have some fun and go clubbing and then we'll bring our girls and we just have a great time. But that's that's what, that's the Glenn that I'm going to remember, you know, and, and that's the guy that I'm going to remember because when, when you know, you, you you know a lot about people when they when they have something in life because when people have something, a good mark of their character is how much they how much they want to reach back and help up, help out other people, you know, but when people have stuff and they just want to hoard it to themselves and, and not want to help other people, you know, then that's the kind of person I don't, I'm not really into, but Glenn was the kind of guy who had a lot and he shared it. He shared what he had, you know, he, he's changed. When I say he changed people's life, he's changed people's life. You know, the, the Michael Johnson's, the Anthony Johnson's, you know, myself, Tyrone, like, you know, even Eddie Alvarez, you know, they didn't have the best, um, you know, ending of their relationship. But at the end of the day, like he, he did, he did, you know, help help Eddie, uh, you know, get out of get out of his situation too. And um, you know, it it uh, it may have not ended the way Eddie uh, wanted it to, and a lot of guys didn't want to. But you know, the effort, the, the trying. But to me, that matters a lot. I'm happy you said that about family because I would actually, I remember speaking to him, would speak to him a lot, and, and he would refer to guys like you and Anthony and Tyrone as his sons. And I always found that to be interesting, yeah. but he would actually say that when talking about you guys and how proud he was of you about what you were doing. I remember when Jordan Parsons passed away, how devastated he was. Um, and, and, and talking, I spoke to him recently, uh, not that long ago, about Taiwan Claxton and how excited he was about him. So uh, he was just really proud of, of all of you, even, you know, off the record, behind the scenes. And uh, it was just uh, just shocking to hear of, of his passing. I appreciate you coming on, Rashad, and talking about him oh, a no little problem, bit. No problem, man. And I hope that people remember no problem, all the things he did in the sport. Yeah, no problem, man. I appreciate you having me on, man. You know, Glenn, Glenn is a great guy. And, and um, you know, I, I don't know. Now, maybe some people say other things different, but the people who really knew Glenn knew where his heart was at, you know. And um, no, no one, no one walks in this life mistake-free without making mistakes because it, it is the reason why we live. We live to make mistakes. We live to learn the lessons that 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 mistakes brings, and and to come back and be better, a better person. That's what life is about. And um, I don't think that he should be looked at differently. You know, because he made some mistakes in his life at one point. You know, he he was a uh, he, he he was a great man, and even though the team didn't work out the way that he wanted it to, you know, I, I'm I'm forever a black Zay, and, and uh, I'm I'm forever proud to call him a friend of mine. Thanks for doing this, Rashad. Hang in there, and again, no thank you. My condolences to you and the team um, on his passing. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. All right, there he is, Rashad Evans, uh, remembering Glenn Robinson, who passed away uh, late last week due to a heart attack. Wish the best to his uh, family as well. His daughter actually would do a lot of interviews, uh, post them on YouTube. He was very proud of her as well. He'd show me clips 
of what she was doing and uh, was, was, was always glowing when speaking about her. So I uh, wanted to wish our condolences to his family as well.